Hi viewers, my name is Cece. I teach the free sewing classes at the Dallas Library. The library's been closed the last few weeks, so we decided to reach out digitally. This is my first time doing videos, so I have five videos already put together. If there's anything I can improve on, please comment below. Thank you! So our first project is yet another cloth face mask tutorial. So with this, the materials are actually very little. I only need a palm's worth or hands worth of fabric for both sides. On the outside I use novelty cotton and then on the inside I use flannel because for me if I'm gonna have this up against my face for hours, flannel is soft. The really big customizable part of this is because there are drawstring casings on each side that you could have behind the ear elastic but you could also have it go around your head, you could have it be paracord or ribbon, the options are kind of numerous because of the fact that it's not sewn directly into the mask itself. However, this does have no filter pocket in it. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so I'm using the Craft Passion face mask. And as you can tell, I already have it cut out for teenage and woman sized. This is not what you need to trace onto your fabric. And that's why I was a little confused with the initial template because of the fact that that was not the case. So this template is just what the finished product size should be, not what, it, what, not what you need to cut. So I had to do away with this and make this. Yay, poster paper. So I ended up tracing this onto my poster paper. And then, because nobody tells you that you should ever use your compass ever again, I used my compass on a... Um, quarter inch to go ahead and trace this line and draw the seam allowance on these three sides. And then this side was just an extra inch. So this is what you should actually cut to for the main fabric and cut to the lining with. Um, that's why I have to put this out that this is not the same as what this template is, but it fits very nicely into that very faint pencil you can see because it's the original. So, I have already cut two of my lining, which is a nice flannel, because my policy is, if I don't want regular cotton on my face, I probably would want something softer like flannel. This is pre-washed flannel, which you should always pre-wash and then dry your fabrics before you cut, especially cotton, because cotton shrinks. Then I also cut two of my main fabric, which is a quilting cotton. It is lemons because lemony goodness um so because these two are cut out the next step is to sew and i'm going to cheat because i already have one pre-sewn so the next step is actually going to be sewing this edge and the reason i start up here is because of the fact that this is a straight line right here and because and due to that the machine doesn't get caught versus right here if this is where you start it's going to get caught up in the machine and bunch up. So I start from this edge to here. Don't forget to back stitch, but we'll go ahead and film that again when we do the actual sewing portion. But I wanted to say this why it was flat where you could see it about why I'm starting up here versus down here. All right, see you on the machine. So for this, I start from the blunt end and work towards the pointed end because of the fact that otherwise the fabric will bunch up when I'm trying to backstitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do the seam. I've already done the other seam in white for the inside flannel. Alright, and this one's done. So I'm going to go ahead and trim my threads. Now, the other factor in this is that I do have to clip, and I clip between the edge of the fabric and the seam. If you cut the seam, you're going to have to re-sew the seam. And the reason you do this on curves is so that it doesn't pucker when you turn it inside out.
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and pin these two together. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew the top and the bottom. I leave both ends open because when I sew the top stitching, I'm going to sew those closed and then make the drawstring casing or the elastic casing, I should say. So now I'm going to go ahead and clip the top and the bottom and then turn this inside out on the sides so that I go all the way around in our circle and ensure that the sides are closed when I make the drawstring casing. At this point, I normally also trim my string. So I trim the extra strings and then I fold this line over and then I fold about half an inch. So then I pin that And I sew on that edge. You get to the end, turn it around, clip that. Then you have a casing. Repeat on the other side.
Now, at this point, you can feed anything that you want through this drawstring, and it'll work. So I tie elastic about 8 inches, and it's really skinny elastic, so I can just tie it, then you're done. Okay, so here's my face mask. I have two really skinny elastics that are cut to 8 inches. I use a darning needle for sewing. I thread the elastic through, and then I thread it through the casing itself, all the way through. And then I go ahead and tie it. Now then rotate it so it's in the casing, and there you go. Repeat for the other side. And the reason I don't trim it is sometimes people will need looser or tighter ear, um, behind the ear elastics. And then there you go. All done. For my outro, I was thinking about doing a video of me, but I figured we might as well do the real star of the show, Ranger. This is my cat, and he is 20 pounds. And no, he's not obese. He is a huge cat. He has been at my feet the entire filming, sewing, cutting, ironing process. He is a Melmo's boy. So I figured for my outro, I will go ahead and use him as he sleeps at the base of my tripod again. <laughs> so please like, comment, and subscribe. Please share with any friends that you feel like they would enjoy these videos or just enjoy seeing the cat at the very end. <laughs> so I hope everyone enjoyed our, uh, my first time doing videos and I hope you have a great day.